God. All right, today we're having a Thanksgiving service and it's one with a difference. I'm sure you must have seen all people dressed in some different looking way. Because you know what, this month is going to be different. In fact, this quarter is going to be different. We're going to do very significant things this, this, um, this quarter. I want to encourage you to be part of it and I pray that the Lord will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. We're marching forward and nothing will stop us, not even the gates of hell. Hallelujah. All right. As I said earlier, I'm actually here to welcome you. And I hope you're excited enough this morning to want to praise God, to want to worship with all the praise team. And um, before we do anything else, let us pray. First of all, we're going to thank God because we're alive. I mean, it, it's a good thing to be alive. It's fresh every morning. And my God loves new things. And so I want to encourage you this morning to just lift up your voice and just thank the Lord that you're alive. Speak to the Lord because the Lord can hear you. Because God knows that you are alive and he knows you're well. And hell knows that too. And so I want you to just lift up your voice this morning and just appreciate the Lord for a new day, for a new month. It's not by mistake you're alive this day of this month of this year. And so thank the Lord because you come with a heart of thanksgiving this morning. A heart of praise, a heart of worship, and a heart of thanks. And so Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for everyone here present. Whether they're here in the sanctuary or they're online. We thank you, Lord Almighty, for the life that you have given them. Because they can see me and because they can hear me. It is evident and testament to the fact that you have spared their lives. Heavenly Father, I pray, let this life glorify you every day in existence in Jesus' name. And so, Lord Almighty, we pray this morning as we have come together in this sanctuary to praise you, to worship you, to exalt your holy name. We ask, oh Lord, that you be lifted up high in Jesus' name. We're excited this morning and we're happy that we're alive. And so, Father, we say thank you. And we pray, Lord, that everything we do here in this house, let it bring you glory. Let it bring you praise, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for everyone who's going to minister this morning. We ask, Holy Spirit of God, that you take absolute preeminence as we worship you together in Jesus' name. Let every yoke be broken and let every heart that is heavy this morning. Father, Lord, we ask that you will lift their burdens, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let there be no hindrance to our worship this morning. May everyone, O oh God, as we have come here with an excited heart. May we worship you. May we magnify you. And I ask, oh Lord God, that all the blessings will be ours this day, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 All right, I'd like to welcome the choir at this point. And please, 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 I beg you, dance. Hallelujah, everybody. Hallelujah. I just want you to welcome your neighbor by your side. It's a new month. We want to celebrate God for bringing us into a new month, into a new quarter. We want to give him all the praise. He's worthy of all the glory. There is none like him. I don't know if you are aware, but we are in our Easter weekend. And today is meant to be Palm Sunday where our Lord and Savior went into Jerusalem on the donkey. And everybody raising their palms celebrating his entry. So we want to say Hosanna to the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. He's worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of all the honor. I want you to raise your hand and just worship him. He's worthy. Worship him. We don't have palm trees on our hands, but we can use our hands and welcome him. We can use our hands and wave to the king of kings and say blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. He's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor. We say Adonai to the great one. We say Jehovah, you're worthy of all the praise. You're worthy of all the honor. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Just wave your hand and give him praise. Give him praise. Call him names. Whatever name comes into your mouth, he's Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Adonai, the great and sovereign one. We worship you, O oh God. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed from the rising of the sun to the setting
rising. From the rising of the sun. Setting up the sun. like soldiers in the house. Hey. How many soldiers do I have in the house this Hallelujah. morning? How many soldiers do I have in the house? When a soldier goes out, when they're about to go for battle, they shout. So I want to go, shout, one, two, go, shout. Put those hands together for Jesus. Say 
he's worthy of all the glory we say in our life be glorified God all the glory belongs to you take all the glory we come this morning that we say thank you for your goodness for your greatness for you are marvelous we see your signs your miracles your wonders all around us every day we wake up we move our body not by our own power but because of your goodness your grace and your mercy they are new every morning great is your faithfulness lord we come to say thank you your children are here to say thank you in our lives we glorify oh we worship you lord
Lord, we thank you. Here we are at the beginning of a new month of April. Lord, we look back to January with gratitude. We look back to February with joy. We look back to March with thanksgiving. And now here we are in the month of April. Father, oh Lord, to return all the glory to you. All the honor to you. Is there somebody here that is glad this morning for a new month? You begin to give God thanks. You begin to give God thanks and praise. Tell him your story. Tell him glory. Oh, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, what have you enjoyed in this month's past? What have you enjoyed since this year began? Begin to thank God for it right now. Begin to thank God right, right now. Hands your blessings, name them one by one. one. Count, Count your blessings, see what God has done. marvelous things for you. What he has given you, he's giving you breath in your nostrils. He's giving you strength in your boat. Yes. He's giving you the ability to get up and to go. Yes. He's giving you the ability to sleep and to wake up. Oh, somebody give him thanks and praise this morning. Oh, Lord, we just worship you. We just glorify your own name. I will never be ungrateful to you, Jesus. I will never be Ungrateful to you, Lord. 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 I will never be. I will never be. I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. There's somebody here. The Lord has marvelously changed your story between January and now. If you're that person, just wait to the most high God. Oh, my Lord, we thank you for all those who are changing their stories. There's somebody here. You have been healed. You have been healed between January and now. You trusted God for healing and healing came. Oh, just wait to the most high God right now. Say, Lord, I thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. There's somebody here you have been settled. You never knew it, but between January and now, the sentiment has been your portion. Thank God for sentiment. Thank God for sentiment. Thank God for sentiment. Thank God for sentiment. Oh, there's somebody here between January and now. The Lord has done something wonderful in your family. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Restoration. Restoration. Oh, Father Lord, we just thank you. We just glorify your holy name. Our hearts are good. And thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a few announcements before the choir comes up for the hymn. Um, this month is, um, as we know, this is Easter month. Um, next weekend is Easter weekend. So as a church, we're going to be doing a lot of different things um, because it's Easter. At Easter time, we go busy um, to go and do things outside for the Lord. So um, next week, Saturday, um, there is the, uh, there will be a special breakfast meeting, a big for business people and leadership and leaders in, in, uh, hosted by a, a, a group here, a company, um, an organization here called Somebody Cares. We'll be doing that on Saturday, 8 to 9, uh, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., 8 to 10 a.m. You see that in the, in, the, in the news. Also, the youths of the city, they are gathering here on Saturday to discuss the future of the city. On Friday, we join with other churches in the city to carry the cross. Good Friday, carry the cross around the city. And then, and then we stop at Mark and Spencer has our own station where we do a time of worship and prayer. You know, we're going to do it differently this year. We're going to be carrying some placards as well to declare God's purpose over this land. And then on Sunday, we have Easter service here. We have two services, 9 and 11. But then immediately after the service, we all go together 
to the uh, castle gates we are going to have we call it we call it a concert but we know it's a, it's, it's a prophetic um, opportunity to, to preach and to, to show the goodness of the lord um thank god for the for the for the um for for the uh, for the theme for this month is jesus not an army jesus not an army jeremiah 6 22 that's our theme this month so you can see the choir already wearing their uniforms their military uniforms me i'm also wearing my general uniform today uh, next sunday by god's grace we'll be wearing our battle fatigues fatigues because it's time to go to war hallelujah you know this is war. this war is there's war in scotland now uh, i will tell you the wars that are going on that we're going to win so that's our focus on monday this monday we have um, a professional mentoring uh, group every monday is now our training days so this tomorrow we're going to be talking about some specific topic topics some people have asked on some topics about how to to do well in, in to function well in office in business so we'll go to that and then uh, we're having three days of fasting and praying for the new 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 season and we're calling it esther and hannah's groaning room groaning room you know a groaning room is where things are bettered you know esther esther and the and the jews went to groan for three days after that they went to go and confront him and and a new nation was was given birth to power was transferred and hannah went into the groaning room herself and she came out with her baby so for monday to wednesday we are praying and then we're meeting every evening 6 p.m i'll be here myself it's going to be a different type of prayer we're just praying and groaning through um and then of, we, the prayers continue for the rest of this week towards the events that are taking place um, over the easter uh, season uh, two saturdays two sundays from now our our church in Edinburgh, Edinburgh Tabernacle, that we, we went to start many years ago, and God gave us a building there. Our general pastor, Pastor Yadebu, will be in Edinburgh, uh, will be hosting in Edinburgh two, three, two Sundays from now, where he'll be dedicating that church. Hallelujah. So, so those who want to go, they will have to think of, those who want to go, then you, um, this, I mean, we arrange a bus, not the church bus, we arrange, arrange a bus. If you have enough people that want to go, I uh, want to go on, want to go as a group on that Sunday then let us let let uh, let the help desk know and then we can put a bus together and hire a bus together for, for, for them to go um, um, and of course you're also free to, to drive your own cars as well to praise God but it's a great joy to us at our baby church you know the first time Pastor Adebo came was to come and dedicate this building and now he's he, since then he came he has also been back he dedicated our second building in Smithfield here in Aberdeen and now for the third time he's coming to our baby church they're not got babies they're adults now praise god so to god be glory tell somebody you are in the right place praise god choir <laughs>
Your shoes ready? Hallelujah. Your legs ready? Amen. Your mouth ready? Amen. Your whole body ready? Because it's time for warfare. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is looking for an army in the northern part of the world. And we have chosen to be God's northern army. We stand here in Scotland, which is not of the United Kingdom, not of the whole world, not a hemisphere. We stand here in Aberdeen, which is not even of Scotland. And God needs an army. And we choose from today to be part of that army. There is war going on. And the question is who will go to war? And we as a church and as a movement, we choose to go to war. And so, Father Lord, we stand up today to be counted as your army for this time, for this season. Thank you, mighty in glory. We will not fail you. As I have said, if you need anybody, you can use me. Lord, we choose to be used by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please have your seats and open your Bible. Hallelujah. People of God, there is a war going on. There is a war going on. And the Lord is looking for those believers that will go forth into that, into the battle. Let me start off first. Number one, there is a war going on. That's number point. Number one, I will convince you that there is a war going on. Number two, God needs an army. And we, as a church, have chosen to be part of that army. Thank God, my brother. Let me see your military. You are, you are military fatigue. Yes. No, stand up. Let's, let's let them see it. Next Sunday, please bring as many as you can bring. You'll bring your own in. Hallelujah. I'll bring my own. Today, I'm wearing as a general. Tomorrow, this is general as for ceremony. Ceremony. This is my ceremonial uniform. Next Sunday, I'm bringing my, the battle one. Hallelujah. There's a war going on. God needs an army, number two. And number three... <laughs> number three, the kingdom of God is a kingdom of warfare the kingdom of God is a kingdom of warfare now it doesn't matter whether, whether you know it or not, there's a war going on you know, there's a war going on and then those who know are able to win in life 
I tell you, um, it, what, has, what is happening in the times and seasons that we're in right now. Let's start off with springtime. This is springtime, beginning of April. It's springtime. We ought to know times and seasons. In springtime, let's go to the New Te Old Testament. In springtime was when the Lord brought the people of Israel out of captivity. When you read about, you know, the Moses going to Pharaoh, the, uh, then leaving Egypt, crossing the Red Sea, it all happened in springtime. And in Exodus chapter 12, verse 41 to 42, to bring the Israelites out of Egypt, God did all night, night vigil. And I'm reading now from the Good News Translations. It says, on the day the 430 years ended, all the tribes of the people, of, of lost people left Egypt. It was a night when the Lord kept watch. Did Nibijo bring them out of Egypt? This same night is dedicated to the Lord for all time to come as a night when the Israelites must keep watch. So the, the Jews, they have what they call a Passover feast. They do night vigils to say, ah, if God did night vigil for us to bring us out, the least we can do is every year we do what? Night vigils. So that's why we, the Jews have what they call the Passover during this period. The same Passover period was when Christ was killed on the cross. It was the same Passover period then, but Passover didn't end that way. Christ came and, and resurrected. So the whole battle of the cross took place at springtime. Now when we think about the cross... I was asking some, some of the folks this morning in the first service, what do you think about the cross? Resurrection, salvation. But there was a war going on. It was a war. Part of that war was when Christ went to the Garden of Gethsemane and prayed. The Bible says as he prayed so much, his tears, his, 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 his sweat became like blood. He battled in prayer. He battled to do God's will. Because humanly speaking, they want to do it. He said, if it's possible, Lord, take this cup away from me. But he battled and won in prayer. Then he now went to go and confront, arrested, all the trials, all the pains he went through. And then he died on the cross. But when he died on the cross, that was when the biggest battle took place. That's when he went into Hades and went to fight with Satan. And recover the authority that Satan had taken away from Adam. Thank God we're also finishing the book on spiritual authority. At the cross, Christ went in. And when he resurrected on Sunday morning, his battle was complete. And that's what we're enjoying today. In 1 Samuel chapter 11 verse 1. 1 Samuel chapter 11 verse 1. The scripture says something very interesting. First, second, sorry, second Samuel 11 verse 1. It says, springtime is when kings go to war. And in the springtime, in the springtime, when David ought to have been going to war, he sent his generals and he stayed behind. That was when he had the greatest challenge he ever had. Which led to adultery with Bathsheba and murder and everything else. Because he stayed at home when he should have been going to war. So springtime is what? War time. Now let me bring it to us here now, both in Scotland and in, 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 in our times. The Bible talks about men of Ishaka who understood times and seasons and what Israel ought to do. In our season right now, there's a change in power. There's a change taking place. Within the last six months, the queen who had been queen for 60 years, so 70 years, passed on to glory. We had a new king. Okay? Within that same space, we've had three prime ministers. Never heard before that within 45 days or so, is it, uh, let's say about three months altogether, three prime ministers in another kingdom. It's never happened before. 
and now within the last one month which wasn't planned for we've had a new first minister here in scotland and then for a lot of us either you have contentions in nigeria nigeria is also changing power in this same period when I, I don't just mean this month between now and june but being upset makes no difference unless you are ready to do something about it if you can you can be, remain upset for the next 10 years it doesn't make any difference but when you choose to do something about the upset when you choose to go to battle that's what will make a difference in another country that some of you are from from nigeria you also have change of government coming and Christians are just upset everywhere, complaining and grumbling. It doesn't matter how long you are upset. In this kingdom, crying does not do anything. In this kingdom, what? Tell your neighbor, crying does not do anything. You can weep or you can weep. Hannah used to weep every year. Until the year she decided to do something different. Can I also tell you, prayer is not enough. In this kingdom, prayer is not enough. Now, let me balance it. Somebody said, the pastor is preaching heresy. Prayer is enough if you do prayer completely. Prayer does just doesn't mean asking God for things. After you pray, you must take action. Go with me to the book of Esther, chapter 3. Book of Esther, chapter 3. This month, we are going to be going to warfare. I'm going to be teaching every one of us how to war. How to war. How to war. On, Mon on, so on Tuesday night, we'll be also we'll be teaching about warfare. How to war. Because this kingdom, of, this kingdom of God you are in is the kingdom of warfare. Whether you like it or not, there are war going on all the time. And it's those who prevail in, 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 in the place of warfare that actually win. So in the book of Esther, you know, a number of things took place there. But eventually, in, in chapter 3, a time came when they gathered together, the, 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 the believers, you know, and then they decided to pray because somebody had declared war against them, not without, their even, without even their knowledge. A man called Haman had declared war to, to kill the Jews. And then the people then went to pray. But after they finished praying, all right, they, 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 they were crying initially, they were weeping initially, but that didn't change anything. That didn't change anything. I want to show you now. That didn't change anything. Please go with me to the book of Esther chapter 3. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In chapter 3, a decree was made that all the Jews should be killed because Haman did it. Because Haman organized it. In chapter 3. Then chapter 4. And I'm reading now from chapter 4 from verse 1. Let's read together. Want to go. When Bodekiah learned all that had happened, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city. He cried out with a loud and bitter cry. He went as far as the front of the king's gate. For no one could, must enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And every province where the king's commands and decree arrived, there was a great mourning among the Jews with fasting, weeping, and wailing. Many, many lay in sackcloth and ashes. Did that do anything? It was something. They were on the right track, but that was not enough. Okay, let's carry on. So Esther's maid and Nuno came and told her, and the queen was also what? She's in the palace. She became distressed. Did that do anything? Then she sent garments to clothe Mordecai and, and take his sackcloth away from him, but he would not accept them. So Mordecai called, uh, so Esther called Hashtag, one of the kings, you know, whom he had appointed to attend her, and gave her a command, go and learn from Mordecai, what's going on here? Going on here, just, just keep on, just keep on, keep on, keep on. Well, I don't really hold, um, so can you bring many, many verses together, same so we can see that it goes. So, so, so Hashtag went out to Mordecai in the gate, you know, and then um, verse 7, and Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the son of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasure to destroy the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the written order. So verse 9, Hattag returned and told Esther the words of Mordecai. 
Then, then Esther now told, told, told uh, Mordecai, I have not been called. You know, I have not been called. Nobody can go to the king's courts unless he has been called to the inner courts. I myself have not been called to go there for 30 days. Verse 11. Verse 12, sorry. 12. So, and Mordecai told her, hmm. now all this was going on. Verse, we're not going to, 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 to chapter 5. 1 to 3, and that's what we're going to do to, to, to Tabernacle today. Chapter 5, 1 to 3, please. Um, okay, so what did they do? Um, so actually, let, let's go back a little bit. There's a, there was a place where the, the people, uh, let, let, me, let me just go back there. So, so verse 15, 4, 15. So Esther sent Bodekaya this reply. Go and get all the Jews in Susan to, together. Hold a fast and pray for me. Okay? Don't eat or drink anything for three days and nights. My servant, get women, and I will do the same. After that, I will go to the king. Even though it's against the law, if I must die for doing it, I will do so. So Mordecai then left and did everything Esther had did. To so the people fasted, they prayed, they complained, they grumbled, it didn't change anything. It was when they said to now have a strategy. That was where everything changed. So, okay, fine. What we're going to do is we're not going to fast and, uh, 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 fast and pray. Esther, you are the one nearest to the power. So you will have to be the one that will go and confront the power. Esther, when you were being selected, we didn't know that this was what God was planning. See, power is always given to those who are nearest to power already. That's why if there's no believer near power, power won't transform. And then when the believer is near power, there must be an organization around it to make it happen. That's what the Jews then did. So they fasted, they prayed. Then at the back of that power, so that the, the prayer and fasting was now for a purpose. What it was it was a warfare prayer and fasting. We are going to go to war. And this person is going to be the leading the battle. So that was what they prayed for. And by the time she went into battle physically, they had already won in the in the place of prayer with God. And so then she, Esther could then win when she went to battle. So that is how it works in the kingdom of God. That when we finish praying, the prayer should be strategic and then we we'll go out in that and that was how power was transferred to Esther and Mordecai and they began to rule. So believers, people of God, it's time for the church of God to become more strategic. Thank God for prayers. Thank God for all the, but this time around it was a different purpose. So, yeah, I've been talking a lot, uh, this week I'm talking to a lot of people asking me questions, including pastors. And I said, you, you can't complain because we're not in a game. But, but we must not remain outside the game. You must go into the game soon. Where are they? Um, what? The, 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 those in the, in, the youth, in the youth class, where are you this morning? Those who are, can you come out here? Can you come out here? Can you come out here? Hallelujah. God's got an army marching through the land. You're just going to come and sit on the altar here. Come and sit on the altar here. Just take your seats. In this army, I come. In this army of God I find God's God on army Marching to the land The Libras is the sword Healing in the hands Everlasting love I forevermore In this army going to this a lot more. We're talking about Easter season. One of the things, the greatest weapons that God uses are young people. 
God's army is made up of different groups of people, but the young people are the greatest army. Out of the 12 disciples, we think that at least half of them were youths under 20. When Esther became queen, she was about 13, 14, 15. When Esther became queen, she was about 13, 14, 15. David became uh, King Goliath. Do you know how old he was? About 13, about 14, 15, 16. How do we know? Many ways. But one of them we know because when he became king, God, the, God, the Bible gives us his exact age. David was not qualified to be in the army. That's why he was not the animals. The age for the army was 20 years. And the age for the priesthood was 30. That's why Christ started his public ministry at 30. He, was a, he fulfilled every righteousness. He could have started younger, but he couldn't because he wanted to follow the pattern that priesthood begins at 30. Soldiers at 20. But God uses people at all times. The man that just became first minister in Scotland, how old is he? 37. He became, I think, if, if you look at his history, you know, he started off, even, if, even if the sturgeon, she became counselor at 18. So do they want to raise our children? Well, most of us, it's probably, you know, what we need to do is to, is to release them. Let them start now. So that 10 years from now, they will be counted among those that will be ruling this land. Our own now is to release them. Otherwise, 10 years from now, people will be, people will be here, they will be crying more, even more. Isn't it? Because this, what you have seen today has been cooked for many years. Whatever you have seen today, somebody has been planning it, cooking it. So that's why when you are crying that something has happened, it's too late. Because somebody has been cooking it. So unless we want to start cooking something now, five years' time, there will be nothing to eat. Seven years' time, there will be nothing to eat. And the people that, have, that, have, that are now feasting on this great thing, guess what now? They now know that it works. So that means they are doing even more now. So what I like to know is the battle going on. And God has called everyone that is here today. God has called. This is your primary assignment. Thank God for where you may have come from. That's not really your, your responsibility. This is your own responsibility. Now you have seen that how it's possible for people to come from a foreign land. I'm still talking from a foreign land. They are praised from a foreign land. The prime minister in London, the first minister here, they, have, they came from a foreign land and now they have children have. So that means these are our children can also. You're not catching it all. These are our children also. So we're not going to limit them. I know for some of you, where you come from is only old men that are rude. <laughs> old men are women. And yet, you're not making any progress. Or rather, they are not making, not you, but they are not making any progress. But here in this land, young people are... So it's time. For us as a church, this has, this has always been part of our assignments. We've been called to be a governing church. But now we are releasing ourselves into that dimension. Fully. Fully. And as many as are interested in following us, just let us know. Because it's not for everybody. We're going to be doing a lot of things. We're going to be doing, we can't, I can't say them openly here in the, uh, on, 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 on mic. Even Christ, some things he will call his disciples behind and tell them more things. For those who are interested, that's what we're going to be doing in this season. Out of the 12, uh, 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 out of the 12 disciples, at least half of them were young people. How do we know? For many reasons. They know, the ones who know their professions, Matthew was a tax collector. So we know that obviously then he was an older person. Judas was also an older person because he knew too much. <laughs> you know, so we obviously know that he was 
Peter was also an older person because when it was time to pay taxes, he was one I went to tell Jesus Christ, please, I don't have money to pay. They asked us to pay tax and we don't have money. Then Jesus said, okay, you pay for, you go to the, go, uh, to the fish. You, when you get it, you pay for me and you. So obviously, Matthew was rich enough to pay his own tax. He was a tax collector. So they, at least we know that at least those three, Matthew, Judas, uh, Jesus himself was 30, and Peter, those ones we know were what we might call full adults. All the others were, otherwise, they would have, he would have had to, if, they were, if the others were over 20, then Peter would always have added, or also paid their own taxes. So at least seven or eight of them were all under 20 young people. So we will release our children. We release ourselves, obviously, but we release them and prepare them. And your prayer is not complete until you have taken. After they finished fasting and praying, somebody had to go and go and confront Haman and King Ahasuerus. Many times, the, the, the greatest victories that I, I have received, we have received the church because God gives us an inspiration in place of prayer. That's my prayer. Upon the out of abundance of prayer, you are praying, you are seeing God standing, you are discussing with God, because prayer is also discussing with God. Then from there, you get a direction, an inspiration, an instruction. Or you make a decision and then God backs up that decision. That is what prayer is, 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 is about. We are enough to take this land. Many years ago, I think it was about just before lockdown, my wife and I, we had a privilege. We went to, we were invited to, to Dallas, a church we were doing their first, ordaining their first set of ministers. So we went there. And then on our way back, we went to see a family. We just passed through Atlanta. So for my first time, my only time, we only spent like 24 hours, just a few hours. But as we were leaving, we had the opportunity to go to Martin Luther King, you know, in the district, the church, the Benza Baptist Church. And today is a museum. The government has made the official museum, and then they, they built a big new cathedral next to, in the same district, and there's a center. But when I stood in that church, what, 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 what? Both frightened me and challenged me. It means from that small church, they shook the world. They changed the laws. It's, if you look at the size of a church, it's around our size, maybe slightly bigger. The shape is different, but it's not much bigger. Pastor Laura, I think it's not much. It may be even smaller than ours. So I was watching. I said, wow. From this congregation, they went out of what you might call this spiritual space, and they changed the Lord. They insisted that all, um, everybody must be treated equal. And they fought, they fought, and they fought, and they gained it. And even Martin Luther himself was a young man. His father was a pastor. He was a co-pastor with his father. And you know when he was, when he was killed, unfortunately young, he was how old? 13. How old was he when he was killed? So he fulfilled his life. Even in that time of season. So we must go out of our comfort zone. The other thing we must do is that we must have a significant play in the economic space. You must have a significant place in the economic space. Thank God for jobs. Thank God all of those things. But all of those things should lead to a place in the economy. Corner shops, this shop, that shop, all of those. I'm not just talking about shop, but any kind of space. All that is very necessary. Genesis chapter 30, verse 30. Genesis 30, verse 30. There was a time that a man called Jacob, he had served his father-in-law as, his, as a chief operating officer for... 14 years. Then later on, his uncle, his, he now wanted to do something different. The chief officer, the chief uncle, who was also his father-in-law, said, no, I don't want you to leave. I want you to just give me your salary. He said, okay. 
said, but I also need to do some proofs, do something that will also be longer term sustaining. Thank God we use water sustainable. And so what did he do? He now told the uncle, so I will still work for you, but this time around, I want not just to be a salary person, I want to be part of the business. So that's when he now created a business within the business. And eventually that's what enabled him to, to, to grow and enlarge. So we are also called to war in the economic space. God says, I give you power to do what? Make wealth. But you have to war to turn that into wealth. So your job is a, is a, is a pathway to, to creating wealth. Students, pathway to creating wealth. Do you know you can do that as a student? My brother, he was sharing with me many years ago when he was in school. He was in school in London. You know how one of his classmates, he was from some part of the world where they were very, so while they were in school, then he said, you know, this is friend, was, his classmate was buying, you know, using, he didn't have money, but somehow he, was, he bought one property, two properties, while they were in school. They were going to the same classmates and began to create new source of, 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 of wealth. So we have to go beyond that also to go into the economy space. We must collaborate to work together. So the kingdom of God is the kingdom of warfare. And we are called to do this, 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 this we're, we're called to go into this warfare. We are called to raise a new generation. Otherwise, the crime will just continue. But I know that it's not continuing in Jesus' name. Because today we choose to take action. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of where? warfare. And, and, the, and the warfare, you know, it wins. Romans 8, 19. Romans 8, 19. says creation is waiting for the manifestation of the God. Let me tell you another secret of the kingdom of God. Crisis brings up champions. <laughs> In the kingdom of God, crisis brings up champion. Talk, yeah, clap for the clap for Lord if you're excited about it. If it's your word, excite, you know, show yourself. Do you know, do you know the, the military is they are, they're always making noise. Everything about the military is noise. When they say uh, whatever, whatever, everybody shout. So please shout. In the kingdom of God, crisis brings up champions. It was a crisis. Of Haman. That ended up. Mordecai from the gates became. Prime minister. Goliath. It was a crisis of Goliath that brought David. Who wasn't qualified to be in the military. So. That victory fast tracks him. <laughs> Instead of, he became general after killing Goliath. Instead of joining the military as private, corporal, I don't know who do, sergeant. The crisis, since he was the only one that took action, heaven backed him up. And then he was translated from, he jumped straight into becoming general. Over those that have been there before. So when there's a crisis around you, others may be crying. But we are talking and discussing, what do we do under God? Because champions will come out. Out of this congregation, out of these, our younger ones, you will hear great things in the years to come. Because we are not just crying, but rather we are organized. There's another principle in the kingdom. Stop agonizing. Start organizing. It is those that are organized that control, that determine how things work out. And that was what Esther, Mordecai, all the rest of them do. Before that time, there was no organization. Everybody was doing their own thing. Everybody was doing their own fasting, their own prayer. But when trouble came, for the first time, you know, they cry together. 
Then they organized together. Then they fasted and prayed together for a certain purpose. And then one person went out to go on. And that was how things came. Organizing. So we need to organize ourselves stupendously. Tremendously. Into different groups and organizations within our space. And then we go out and fight like a, like a, like a battle. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. So young ones, don't let anyone hold you down. Bless them together. We are hands of the Father. We are joint hands with the Son. We are children of the kingdom. We are family. Just a short prayer today. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I'm excited. I did a war. And now we have a war. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is counting upon us. And we will not fail him. We will not fail him. He didn't send us from the bush of Africa to come and fail him. Hallelujah. He brought us like he took Joseph. And so he took Joseph from, from, from and took him to, 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 to Egypt to go and manifest. He brought David out of the bush to go to the army to, to bring down Goliath and go and manifest. Hallelujah. The work of Christ will not go down. But rather to increase in our lives. Saving souls. Raising souls. That's our portion. And that's what we're going to do in Jesus' name. Just lift our hands towards heaven. So, Lord, we just thank you. We just worship and glorify your holy name. Lord, we choose today, Father, to go into war. Father, oh Lord, to win for you. And Lord, there's anyone that is here today. But Lord, as they begin to battle for you, please, Father, oh Lord, win their battles for them in the name of Jesus. As they begin to battle the battles of the kingdom, Father, oh Lord, give them victories in their homes. In their, uh, Lord, give you victories in your home. Give you victories in your, in your career, in your business. The Lord will give you, I want the Lord to settle you so that you can settle him also. In the name of Jesus. The Lord settle you. The Lord prosper you. The Lord release you. In the name of, let your prayers become, uh, become manifestations. In the name of Jesus. If there's anyone here today that's in trouble, you are delivered from trouble in the name of Jesus. So that you can go and fight God's battles. In the name of Jesus. Receive victory in your own battle. So you can carry on God's battle. In Jesus' name. Amen. There's anyone here today who's not yet born again. We all eyes closed. We're not yet born again. Or perhaps you used to be born again, you backslid. It's not a time for backsliders. Ah, it's the time for those who will become victors. Let me see your hand up. You want to give your life to Jesus. Oh, Father Lord, I just thank you. If there's anyone here in the sanctuary or those who are worshiping online, Lord, I pray that they will reconcile back to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my team. Glory. Thank you, Lord of all lords. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please have your seats. Today we are combining our thanksgiving with our tithes and offering. We're going to do all together. Please just get ready. Hallelujah. God bless you. So the future leaders. Uh, actually, come, come, come back for a minute. Come back for a minute. Come back for a minute. You are not future leaders. Prophetically, we call you what? Leaders. In Scotland, you are leaders in Jesus' name. Wherever you go in school, you will lead. In school, you will lead. I'm not hearing your own amen. In school, you will lead. As, at work, you will lead. Uh, you know, at home, you will lead. And then when you go out, you will lead in government and everywhere you go in Jesus' name. You will be captains of industry. You will create new businesses. Out of you will come innovation. In technology, innovation. In commerce, innovation. In the name of Jesus. Go and manifest in Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord. It's time for tithes and offering. I'd like to uh, encourage us to prepare our offering and tithes as we go into the stage. Can the media team please be in Luke chapter 21, verse 1 to 4, please? Luke 21, verse 1 to 4. I'll read it very quickly. It says, And he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. One to four, please. And he saw also a certain poor widow putting in two mites. So he said, Truly I say to you, that this poor widow has put in more than all. For all this out of the abundance have put in offerings for God. But she, out of her poverty, put in all the livelihood that she had. I want to use this opportunity to thank everybody who has been given to the church in offering, in tithes, in donations. Recently, we asked for donations for buying chairs for the church. So many people give, and the church really appreciates you. And we say the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes when things can be a bit difficult and tight financially, but still, we go out and give our offering, we give our tithes, we donate to the work of God, trusting God and in obedience to God. And I know that the Lord Almighty, who sees our offering, who sees our giving, will bless every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Just as Jesus saw this widow with her two mites, the Lord is seeing your offering, the Lord is seeing your giving, he will repay in the name of Jesus. He will increase you, he will bless the work of your hands, he will make a way for you, he will answer your prayers, he will prosper all that concerns you in the mighty name of Jesus. So thank you once again, God bless you. As many as still are willing to give to, to, to the church for the chairs, for the chairs, the um, the site, the, the, the how to give is on the screen. If you have, if you still wish to be part of that and to bless uh, the church that way, please. That is the uh, the detail on the screen. Thank you so much. God bless you.